Hey everyone. Ah, uh, first off, you'll notice I'm playing Warcraft music in the background. This is all the Cataclysm soundtrack. All rights and copy, blah 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 blah. All legal sh uh, belongs to Blizzard. I am playing this off of my CD, off of my computer, directly off of the CD. Anyways, um, on top of that, this week's uh, subject is World of Warcraft and why people feel it's going downhill. Um, well, well, let's look at the facts. Starting all the way way back in Nilawau, it was basically the prototype of what the game is now. Um, back when it was released, it was completely, and in every respect, unique. Uh, anyways, people were intrigued by it. The way you leveled up was unique. Uh, the after actual level didn't matter. It was more about your gear. Um, as you leveled up, you got very small amounts of stats versus great big heaping blobs of it. You didn't uh, choose to assign your stats. Your stats were based off of your class and wholly off of your class. You didn't like say, oh, I'm going to be made with a zillion strength. Because you couldn't wear the gear. You didn't know how to wear the gear. Um, each class did something different, something flavorful. Everything was unique, different. Leveling felt good, and then endgame, it was. there was problems endgame. Lots of them. Uh, dis unbalanced classes, uh, boring bosses, and the ones that weren't boring were so crazy difficult that if one guy was out of line, rocks fall, all die, and you have to restart the encounter, and raids would like, kier, kier, blah, 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 and just basically fall apart. You couldn't get into groups with just random people. You had to sit and recruit for hours to get through one instance, to get one piece of gear that might be a little bit of an up. Back in Nilawau, if you had 3k health, as a tank, you were awesomely geared. I'm not kidding. 3K. Not 30. Not 20. Not 10. 3. 3,000 health. If you had like 4,000, you were putting too much emphasis on having health. You were terrible. If you had less than 2,500, you were terrible. Then the Burning Crusades came out and they fixed a lot of this. Lots of endgame content, flavorful bosses, better areas, and what a more PvP introduction, and basically what a lot of people also noticed was the introduction of flying mounts. This has been accredited for many flaws in World of Warcraft right now. It was its biggest accreditation for negatives is that it destroyed World PvP. If you were on a PvP server, you just basically floated around on your uh, mount just far enough from the highest point in the city so that you couldn't be targeted and shot to death. Because entering combat doesn't dismount and getting dazed dismounts you. It used to be, oh, you got hit with an ability. Dismount, die. Well, they fixed that because of an ability called Typhoon, which was introduced in World K. I'll get to that later. Um, and by the end of the Burning Crusade, many people were burnt out because it was a year between the last two raids, Black Temple and Sunwell. But before that, a lot of content came out, very fast and very well paced. And overall, people thought that Burning Crusades still felt good and different and flavorful. Then Ro Ro Wrath of the Lich King came out. This is where homogenization in terms of the content started to come in. More player-friendly things were added. The Dungeon Finder, random Battlegrounds, Heirlooms. Hundreds of things that just started to make the game a little less flavorful. But it was still pretty good, honestly. I started playing during uh, Wrath of the Lich King, late Wrath of the Lich King, when I spent Citadel. One of the big complaints wasn't in the PvP department, but in the player versus environment content. Where the raids that came out, well, first tier of raiding, you got two really cool raid bosses, and a recycled instance. Ooh. Tier 2 was boring as shit. Okay, 
shit, I'm not kidding, it was boring as shit. I played tier 2 content. Holy fuck, it was boring. Then you got Ulduar! Holy hell, that place was huge! But I loved it. Lots of really interesting bosses. You had a boss where you did it entirely in vehicles. It was fun. It was interesting. The crazy cat lady, okay? Crazy cat ladies! And you had to fight an old god, too. Yay. The next couple of tiers were really boring, extremely frustrating, and yielded little to no reward, and there was massive amounts of gear inflation. Unnecessary gear inflation, too. This is back when uh, 10 and 25 dropped different gears. 25 dropped better gear. So basically, every tier, there was a tier, a tier and a quarter. Your actual, it was your actual tier set which was the tier and a quarter. Then there was the actual tier gear. Then there was the 25 gear, and then there was the slightly less than gear, 10-man gear. And then there was the hero heroic modes, 10 and 25-man gears. Oh, joy, did it get complicated trying to itemize all that, apparently. And gear just kind of inflated. DPS got so retardedly powerful. And I'm, I do mean, like, Someone who was designing the DPS had to be mentally challenged in some way, shape, or form. There had to have been some people on some seriously bad mental cases programming the DPS because it just got stupid. It got, in every sense of the term of retardation, both medically and normally, like, people who have never picked up the game could do top-end DPS. People who couldn't play World of Warcraft because of mental disadvantages could just randomly prattle out high-end DPS if they were if their characters were given enough gear. That's nice. Anyways, sorry, getting distracted. And I, I'm I'm dead serious. It was just tailored to morons. Just like there were a number of people I know who have mental retardations that were like. I'm dead, derp derp. I, I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm, this is not contradicting what I said in a previous rant. This is actually based off that rant. Um, then Cataclysm came out. God, I loved it. Now, over the course of Nilla, Burning Crusades, Waddle King, Cata, they've made the game slightly more noob-friendly. Because Burning Crusades, it was almost impossible to get into. And because of how they tuned the raids, maybe 2% of the people could do the very last raid. Sunwell. Well, okay, anyone could do anything at any point, so long as you killed the normal mode boss for it. And it was just so ridiculously easy, everyone could do it. Well, okay, it was seriously casual only. Hardcore stuff went through, and then they just, you know, started adding some weird stuff. You know, Cataclysm. Six or seven new areas. Five levels. Didn't seem like much of an expansion pack. Now, people complained about this. Well, where's all our new content? Well, what Blizzard did is, for the Cataclysm expansion pack, they focused less on just prattling out new content for people to burst through, and focused more on the story of the game. They focused more on the RP aspect, which had been getting severely ignored. Sure, it was being thrown in there just, you know, get stuff done. But they weren't, like, making anything really too terribly flavorful for it. The game didn't feel fleshed out. It didn't feel complete after Waddle K came out. So what they decided to do is they revamped the entire 1-60 to leveling run. A couple of areas were left fairly well alone. But a lot of the old areas got revamped. More flavor, better quests, nicer stuff. Your starting area, you don't have to sit and grind for 20 minutes, hit level 5, and still all have only the worst possible gear, then do all the quests be level 7, and just have such all that time wasted just trying to get the random drop gear that you had to have to go to the next section of the game. Otherwise, your armor was so freaking low that you just. You're dead. Run back, res. You're dead. Run back, res. You're dead. Run back, res. To your player constantly. So they added better looking gear, too. They made the game as a whole feel 
more satisfying. A lot of the people who just like to punch out content felt like they were cheated out of good content. Well, if you look at how much work went into Cataclysm, they pretty much reprogrammed half of Kalimador and Eastern Kingdoms. They redid a very monstrous number of quests. And then they still added more areas, more levels, more quests, new fresh quests, new abilities, new spells, and completely redid the talent system, added three new raids, twelve bosses, two new battlegrounds, which are reworks of old ones apparently, Battle for Gilneas, and Twin Peaks, which has a lot of line of sight break instead of War Sun Gulch, where you can just shoot anyone anywhere, and Battle for Gilneas, where it's basically a tactical run for who has the last man. But they also balance the classes out more. Balance has become a huge issue when it comes to playing the game. Um, and they fixed that. One thing that people are also complaining about is the speed at which the new content is coming out. It's coming out slower and in smaller amounts. Well, ma many of the speculations out there for this include the game engine is starting to get over full, it's being overstrained. Uh, Blizzard's getting lazy, Blizzard's just trying to milk the game for money. Uh, hundreds of different conspiracy theories involving that last one. Um, my personal opinion is, is a combination of all of these. The last one only to a small extent. Blizzard, Incor Blizzard Entertainment is a business. They want money. The point is to make money. They care about your business. They really, really do. They like it if you're happy. They honestly care if you're happy. It's just that their motive for caring is that, well, if you if they care that, that you like the game, that means you're probably going to spend more money with them, which makes them happy. So what makes you happy makes them happy because they're getting what they want from you and you're getting what you want from them. It's a two-way road. As far as the game engine grinding down, it's seven years old. They're hinting towards doing a major engine upgrade right now with all the new uh, networking options that they made. Optimized network speed, triple buffering, uh, reduced input lag, direct X11 compatibility. All that is just running together to do this. Um, they're probably gonna update the graphics engine. Uh, they're looking at adding a dungeon journal for normal modes so that getting into the content is a little easier. Um, appearance modifier. This is probably something they took from uh, DC Universe Online, where, you're, where you pick what your character looks like, rather than have it determined by your gear. This is mostly kind of an RP thing. But the RP aspect of the game has been getting ignored quite a bit, I might add. So they're adding more to the RP of the game. Because with a little bit of RP in the main content, it makes the game feel complete. How would you... Because Call of... They don't want it to end up like Call of Duty. Load game, shoot people, move on. You don't care where you are. All you care is about is shooting the next guy, moving on, and locking the next gun to kill more guys. Seriously. That's about it. There is no story to Call of Duty, yet people pay obnoxious amounts of money to play it. This is because the gameplay is still good. But they haven't upda really updated their engine. They keep making it look prettier. They keep making it feel nicer. But they're really not updating the engine. Same thing happened to Blizzard. They kept making the game look better. Not graphically, but, like, content-wise, they weren't making the game as a whole better. The end of the game is still relatively unupgraded, and for the most part it's the same. Talent system, blah blah blah. But 
they're fleshing it out more. And this could be putting strain on it. So that covers money grabbing little buggers, graphics engine. Second one, getting lazy. Uh, no. That, that's just a boldface lie, okay? They're not getting lazy. They're, they're, for, they're pushing Diablo 3 more. They're working on a new MMO that uh, apparently is called Titan. Don't really know anything about that. And they're still working on StarCraft stuff, too. There's just a lot of things. And honestly, from a programmer's perspective, they're doing the right thing. People complain about a lot of the small stuff that made Cataclysm launch really, really bad. But when you think about it, look at all the different things that they've tried to add to the game to make it more flavorful, to make it keep feeling new, different, unique. Most of those are failed attempts and they learn from their mistakes pretty well, as I've noticed. And as have many other people noticed. But as a whole, look, yes, they're losing a lot of customers to many, many games. Rift took a big chunk out of them. Um, DCU took a decent chunk, but it's floundering. Because both games don't have much in the way of endgame content. Rift is very beautiful, it's very involving, it's engaging, and you can make your own class. You're not locked into something. That is a very big gimmick. That is a very powerful gimmick, too. But a gimmick nonetheless. There's going to be cookie-cutter classes that are just blatantly better for specific things than others. I feel that World of Warcraft is going to keep going regardless of what other companies do. Worst case scenario imaginable. Someone comes out with a game so ridiculously amazing that it makes World of Warcraft look like a piece of garbage E.T. the movie the video game and people just outright stop playing it but it remains an obscenely popular game because it was so solid for so long and it's got such a strong fan base. This is something that can't be killed. This is a game that went uncontested for so long that it is immortal. No one other than Blizzard has the power to stop World of Warcraft. You can slow it down, but you can't stop it. It is the unstoppable force, and no one has yet to figure out a formula to create its immovable object. It's like Batman and the Joker. World of Warcraft's Batman. No one's figured out the Joker. As a whole, as far as going ahead, they're putting in things to make the game more casual player friendly, because that is their biggest money market. They're still adding stuff for the hardcore crowd. They're still at, and they're adding more stuff for the RP crowd. The PvP crew is not getting much, and they're complaining about that. Well, if you think about it, adding in a PvP battleground or an arena is far more complicated than creating a raid. Creating a raid, you just gotta think, okay, this what can we do to make a mechanic that will make this obscenely difficult, but still beatable? Well. On the other hand, when it comes to a battleground, you're not thinking just a linear path. You're not thinking point A, point B, get there. When it comes to players, when you fight another player, it's a completely different mindset. Because you know that they're thinking about everything that you're thinking about thinking about, and it gets to some really weird mental loop, and it's a lot of psychological warfare in people. And that's why there's add-ons that are flat-out banned, because they play the game for you. In PvP, eliminating the element of panic, the sense of urgency, is the biggest thing. If you create a map for an arena, say I just slapped a piece of paper on the floor, made its floor look really, really pretty, and called it an arena, great. You just made an awesome scenario for pretty much just one or two classes. So I add a few couple of things in to try and make it a little more clustered, a little less range friendly. 
Well, if I had too many, the range could become useless, and now only the melee work. So I take a couple of things out, but if I take the wrong things out, I make one range better than another range. Or melee better than another, like Death Knights can just pull you over things. Uh, mages can shoot around. Hunters, you know, pets. Warlocks can scout with their pet too. And balance is such a huge issue with them that it takes a lot longer than just saying, Okay, let's update this, or let's make this guy new, this guy new, that guy new, that guy new, make a semi-linear path to get from A to B to C to D, and then give them the abilities and call it good, so long as the abilities aren't just an auto-wipe. It's a lot easier to program stuff around a health bar and how much damage someone is doing than it is to program around human thought. And with that, I'm going to let you go. Thanks for listening. I hope to see you folks again some other time. Laters. Ta-ta. Farewell. Shalom. And aloha.